Welcome to the Welsh Woodman channel and in tonight's video I'm going to be showing you how I sharpen my wood turning tools. When I first began wood turning, sharpening was a, was a massive sort of learning curve and I was really grateful for the people that took the time to show me how to sharpen. So I thought I'd pass on some of those great tips I, I got off of the people and that would help sort of new turners getting into sharpening or people struggling with sharpening out. So in tonight's video we're also going to be using my wood turning sharpening jig so I've got a video explaining the entire process of making this on my channel and that just gives you a more consistent accurate grind each time. So I hope you enjoy. So there's always a massive debate amongst wood turners as to what's the correct angle to sharpen your tools. Now I believe that everyone's got their own sort of different way and style of turning and therefore people are going to sharpen the tool slightly differently to suit that style. Now I'm going to show you some angles that are traditionally used so that should help you out but essentially what you'll find is you'll find an angle that works just right for you and you'll tend to stick to using that angle and that's why the sharpening jig is so handy because you can get that consistent angle each time which is going to be better for you in the long run when it comes to turning. So before we begin grinding, I thought we'd have a look at the grinding setup itself. I've got a six inch Clark bench grinder. It's by no means an expensive grinder. It actually cost me 15 pounds on Gumtree. Uh, so I know other people have spent hundreds of pounds on grinders, but this does the job for me. Uh, I've got my jig mounted on an 80 millimeter ply uh, plywood centered in the, uh, the wheel there. And behind the grinder itself, we've got some little slip stones and these are ideal for the inside of your uh, bull gouge flutes and things like that. I've got a little diamond uh, one there to help me with that process as well. Now the, the two wheels I've got on my bench grinder, I've got a CBN wheel, so carbon borer nitrate wheel, which sort of cuts through the material. And I've got a smooth aluminium oxide wheel. Now with the aluminium oxide wheel, each time after you use it, you're gonna to need to use a dressing stone. So you've got like these little diamond particles there to make sure it's nice and flat. As especially when you come to using your gouges, you'll tend to take out a little dip in the, uh, the middle of this. Right, let's get sharpening on some tools. So before we start grinding, we're gonna need a pair of goggles. And I like having them close to the grinder in the same place as I get into the habit of putting them on before each grind. So the first tool we're going to be sharpening is the spindle roughing gouge. Now it's designed to remove material quickly and the traditional sort of angle that's been sharpened in here tends to be around about the 40 degree angle. So anywhere within 5 degrees of, of that you'll, you'll have good joy. So it should be square and flat across the top. One single bevel, so this ground bit, go around the side. And a, a non sort of traditional way of sharpening, this I picked up from a friend of mine, he Still a square top on the on the front, but he tends to grind back the, the wing slightly more to a point and he uses that point then to do a, a finishing cut and he only uses the centre of the roughing gouge to do the roughing out. So I'll show you how I get both of those sort of grinds now. So a fantastic tip given to me by a chap called Richard Bray who first helped me when I, I started wood turning to how to sharpen. Uh, use a permanent marker across the length of the bevel and that's going to help you set up the uh, the tool to the right cutting angle. You only need to do it on one part rather than the entire thing. So in theory, with this jig, if you've got it set up, you should be able to cut a consistent angle. So we're going to be using the little V-block jigs. And with this, I can move my sort of arm in and outwards. I'm just moving it to where I think it should be before I lock it into place. And I'm rotating the wheel uh, away from me. I find that's a little bit easier when you're setting up. And I'm checking to see if, oh, well, you can see that. So you can see I'm taking away all the way from the tip right down to the, the bottom of that bevel. So I know that's the right size I need to extend my bar length to. So I can lock these off and I'm going to use my little spanner to tighten that down. And that's all locked in place now, solid. So I'm going to drop the handle down into the middle portion, rotate to the side, come up, check in that. As you can see, I've got a tiny bit more to go on the sharpie area, but just rotating it backwards and forwards until I get one continuous bevel around the piece. Now the disadvantage of a CBN wheel is you can't see when the, the sparks are coming over the top. 
So if we were to grind it on a coarse wheel, you'll be seeing sparks coming just over the top of the blade, and you'll know that's the, the point where it's getting a really, really razor sharp edge. So after grinding then, we should get a nice, sharp, continuous bevel edge then across, and it should be 90 degrees all the way across there as, as well. Now, often with these roughing gouges, especially if you're doing greenwood turning or you're turning a lot of softwoods, the inside of the gouge of the flute will get clogged up. Now, an easy way of cleaning that out, I found, are these sort of little oil slip stones designed for gouges. I just run those up and down the flute. Now, if you run those up to the very edge, any of those burrs that have rolled over on the inside of the flute will get knocked off and it'll bring it more to a to a sharper point I found so you get like a razor edge by doing it this way. It only takes a little bit of time but it's definitely worth it so that tool will hold an edge for a little bit longer. Now what I found if you haven't got a slip stone you can just put a bit of wet and dry paper around a dowel and it'll do exactly the same sort of thing but you want to be cleaning the inside of these flutes to, to keep them nice and ready for sharpening. The smaller roughing gouge then, how to get that sharp point with cutting on the wings. So the only advantage that has really is you don't have to switch over to another tool to get a finishing cut. But if you're not really worried about wasting seconds, then you don't really need this at all. So we're gonna be using this table at the moment. So I've set that, so you can see I've got my Sharpie mark all the way across, put it onto the table, feed it in. I'm removing all of that right up to the, the cutting edge. So with this, I put my thumb on the top, rolling that edge, removing, rolling. So I've got it square across the top. And what I then do then is move at a 45 degree angle. That just sharpens the very tip edge there. Same again the other side, but 45 degree angle. And that just gives you a really sharp point on the tip. So with this one, you only cut with the central portion. Use the tip then on that wing to do a finishing cut. The next tool we're going to sharpen is the skew chisel. So it's probably one of the easiest tools to sharpen. So the, the angle itself, so the skew we get from, rather than not being 90 degrees, it's skewed. And that angle traditionally tends to be a 70 degree angle. Now the angles either side, so if you want to get quite technical on this, they should be equal into a central line there. And those grinding angles, if you want to cut hardwoods, it's anywhere between 55 degrees to 40. Or if you want to cut softwoods, they recommend anywhere between 40 degrees to 25. Now, I tend to go to uh, about a 40 degree grind on this, as I don't have to do a regrind. then. I can turn both softwoods and hardwoods. So let's have a look how we sharpen this now. So with the skew, we're going to do exactly the same. So setting it up, so we've got the sharpie portion across the top you can go right down to the bottom with it like so and we know if that grind is taken off all that material right down to that bevel point we know it's good to go so put it onto the table get it nice and square across and grinding so i'm only getting the bottom part there so i need to tap the top slightly so again in at 90 degrees Brilliant. Now I'm running across all the way across that Sharpie mark now. So I know that's set up to the right height, so I can turn him on. You can see how it's taking it all off, look. And I want to hold this up. If you notice, I'm holding it up so it's at an angle, but it's going in square. So you get a nice sharp top across the top, tiny bit more there, look. And we've got a lovely single bevel all across the entire tool there. And you're going to need to do exactly the same for the other side of the skew chisel to get those angles equal into that centre point. 
So you see we've got a, a nice crisp sort of bevel all the way across, even angle either side, which is really good. And we can test the sharpness by really gently running my finger across the top and you can feel your fingerprint sort of catching in that. You just have to be careful while you're doing that method. But some people will figure out how long this bevel grind needs to be by taking the thickness of the bar of the skew. They'll times that by 1.5 or 2 and that will become the distance from the top to how far down they grind. So that's just another way of doing it rather than focusing on angles. So something I wish I knew before I started grinding is how light do you need to push? So you need to be pushing in gently, not pushing hard into the machine. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to remove tiny amounts of material at one point rather than loads at once. And it's a good thing because these gouges and things like that tend to be quite expensive, the steel in them. And secondly, what that's going to do is it's going to reduce the likelihood of you bluing your tools. What I mean by that is the cutting edge turning like a blue colour. And essentially anything sort of darker than a straw colour, you're going to really reduce the um, the cutting ability of that edge, which isn't good obviously for, for wood turning tools. So think of it as like, um, like a sled on snow and you're pushing gently across the, the, the snow with that sled rather than forcing the, the tool into the grinder and that'll really help you save material. So scrapers then. Sharpening this one, the angle I tend to like using is a 60 degrees or, or thereabouts for my uh, my scrapers. Now the uh, the closer that degrees is to, to 90, the more supported the, the scraper is because you've got less material underneath for vibration. The, the sharper that angle, so if you're looking at something really ridiculous like 45 degrees, the more aggressive that cut's going to be and the less supported it's going to be. So as a rule, I tend to have mine around the 60 de degree mark. So we're going to do the same sort of thing with the scraper, just using the Sharpie to highlight all the way across the bevel. We can set our table angle up to the right height. So I'm going to put it onto the table, touching the wheel, rotating the wheel away. And I'm only rubbing the bottom part of the Sharpie, so I need to adjust the... Table. Now I really like the Robert Sorbet tools for this because they've got these little metal buttons on the bottom and it just makes it easier to, to tap. Little tap there, you can even use the tool but I don't tend to like doing that. Um, let's have a look. Well, hey, so we've got, you can see it all the way from the bottom to the top, so that's our correct angle. So we're going to turn them on then, we're going to grind this round, so let's lock that into place first. You see, we've got a little bit more to go at the bottom. So you know when this one's sharp and we're getting small, tiny, tiny micro burrs over the top and we've got a, an equal sort of edge all the way around. Now what you can do if you're just touching up, you don't, if you've got little bits at the bottom that are sort of not completely straight, that's not really a problem because it tends to be just that top edge that's doing the, the sort of scraping action. But if you wanted a proper accurate grind, you would just go all the way until that little tiny thing at the bottom is blended in. So square across or box scrapers are really easy to, to grind. So we do the Sharpie mark all the way across, finding that angle again, rotating the wheel away from us. Yeah, getting that Sharpie mark going all the way to the top, that's good. So we're going to turn it on. Okay, same thing again, square across the top, equal bevel angle across the entire thing. Spindle gouges. Now the traditional angle for a spindle gouge, so we've got the, the bevel, as you see that ground section there. So we come up from that bevel and the traditional angle is about a 45 degree. Now I think this one's probably about a 40 degree. I've heard anywhere between 45 and 30 degrees being used. Now on my sort of continental spindle gouges, I really like using these, but I put a steeper angle. I think it's probably around about a, a 37 degree angle or something like that uh, I use. 
And I like these because you can really roll beads with them at that angle. Now, if you haven't checked out my how to use traditional tools video, I've got a little card there above and you can check out how all these tools are being used. All right, let's get this one sharpened. So in doing the continental spindle gouges, I tend to use the table. I've got that set to about a 35 degree angle. I come in straight, rotate, push up. Come in straight, rotate, push up. And then I get a really sharp edge really quickly and I just go straight back to, to turning then. So that's a, a really cheating way, I guess, of getting a quick angle. So up, so rotate, up. With these continental ones, you can pretty much get away with that. Until the edge goes dull, you can come back to the grinder. So with a traditional grind, so anywhere between 40 and 45, I'm going to be using this end jig. So I'm going to set the tool up so that the same thing again. This <laughs> Buy yourself a Sharpie, they're so good. So I've got that bevel edge all marked in. Going to adjust then the length of this. So I'm rotating the wheel away from me. All the way from the top to the bottom is, is taking that section out. Now we're going to be using the white wheel this time and you'll be able to see the sparks hopefully coming over the top of the edge. And that's where we can identify when this is done. We've got a little spark guard there. I normally put down, but so you can see, I'll put that up. So we rest it flat, rotate, flat, rotate. So you see, we've got an equal bevel throughout using that little little tool there. And I'm going to use a slip stone again. In the top to knock off those, any bevels that have curled over on the inside. And also it helps clean out the, the flute. Now the tool that's debated the most about what angle you should be using is the bowl gouge. Now there are a variety of different turners that like using different angles. So I'm going to talk through some of the angles that are used regularly. And I'm also going to talk about the features of the gouge just to make sort of the terminology easy for you. So we've got the, the shank or the shaft, depending where you're from. And this tends to be a high speed bar that is milled then to get what's known as the flute. So this, this section here is the flute and they'll come in different profiles depending on what mill cutter has been used. So you can get a V section flute. Uh, U-section, parabolic, which is like a elongated uh, master flute, but essentially different flutes will have a, a different function. We'll cover that maybe in a, another video if people would like. And let's have a look at the features at, towards the tip then. So we have where the shank goes into the um, grinding angle. That's known as the heel, the very bottom there. This grinding angle all around is known as the bevel. So you'll often hear people saying, oh, you need to rub the bevel of your work as you're cutting. And what they're referring to is pushing the, the wood against that as you're pushing through. Now the cutting angle itself then, the cutting edge, I should say, is along the, the top there. Now we've got the nose of the, the cutters, the very tip. And we've also got these wings on, on this one. So the, the wings then, You'll often see that people, these will be different sizes depending on what grind you go with, and we'll we'll talk about that next. So the different types of grinds then. If you wanted a more traditional style grind, it tends to be at a 45 degree angle. So that bevel angle from flat goes up 45 degrees. And the the, the front then tends to be sort of squared over, not ground to a to a point. Now from that traditional grind, people tend to use a fingernail grind. And this tends to be at a 50 degree sort of angle. And what people will start to do is slightly sweep back these wings just to give you a little bit more cutting surface. Now a grind I'm really fond of, uh, especially for my bowl turning, is a 40-40 degree grind. A lot of pro turners use this, so Ashley Harwood, a brilliant turner, uh, Stuart Batty, and this is pretty easy grind to get freehand on the, the grinder as well. So essentially that beveled angle is at 40 degrees, but you also feed in the, the tool at a 40 degree angle and turn around as you sharpen. So we have a look at that slightly later on. Now my favorite sort of grind, and I use this for a lot of my work, is a Irish grind. 
Now this is a 55 degree sort of angle, so from flat to 55 degree on that bevel angle, and these tend to have nice long wings for, for cutting. So you're increasing your cutting surface with this, just have to be careful you don't get those catches. Now the chap that developed this grind is a chap by the name of Liam O'Neill. He's an Irish turner, fantastic work, could definitely check him out. But he brought that grind over to America, and it's often known in America as the Ellsworth grind. Now, a, a gouge that is not often talked about. This is an old antique Robert Sorbet one, but it's got a quite a narrow flute, and this is designed for the the bottom of bowl. So the the angle then is like a almost like a micro bevel type angle, at 65 to to 75 degrees normally, and that makes a, a good tool for cleaning out the bottom of bowls. Let's have a look at grinding them on the machine there. So we're going to do the 40-40 grind on a bowl gouge. So I've got my table angle at 40 degrees. I'm going to feed this piece in at 40. And I've got a little scribe mark on there to help me with that. I'm feeding it in at a slight angle to begin with so I can roll round to the centre point. So in, 40, roll into the centre. So we get the other side. In at 40, roll into the centre. And I've got a nice continuous bevel along there 40 degree is that wing angle and 40 degree is the chamfer angle now getting an Irish grind is a little bit more trickier freehand because we've got to get a perfect bevel angle and consistent angles for the wings which is going to involve a roll and a sweeping action at the same time so it's easier to get a Irish grind jig now there's several videos on YouTube already how to make jigs in fact a good few years ago I made Marcus Hornberg's fantastic YouTuber, a German wood turner and engineer, and he's got plans how to make a plywood one as well. Now, over the last few months, I've been experimenting making my own versions. So there's a, a metal version I welded up there, and after some more testing in the future, I might get a video on how to make this one up, if people would be interested in that. I'm also looking at a non-welded metal version as well. So right. Let's get round to sharpening the Irish grind. So with the jig then, I've got a box section which creates a nice V, which is gonna help self-center the tool. And that was the biggest problem with the other jig I was using, is it would roll slightly now and again. And I'm gonna set up to a consistent length. And I've got this block up to around about an inch and a half, I think it is, or two inches. And it's gonna tighten down on these two screws. And you can see they're only pinch tight, but the stability we're getting uh, there is pretty good. And I've got an angle gauge on there as well, so I can change the angle of the grind if I wish. But I've tended to set it and <laughs> leave it there. So we're going to move over now to the wheel. And what I've got here is I've just welded on a, a nut, build the weld around it. And that's the little hole I'm going to be putting the jig into. So setting the distance then. It's going to undo these and we're going to use the good old magic marker in a second. I'm going to do the same thing again, so sharpie all around the outside, especially on the cutting edge. And we can set up the length of this tool. Now as soon as you've got that distance, it's going to be pretty much the same every time. So a little tip is to cut a block of wood to the distance you need and you can just set this up. So it's the same angle each time. But I'll show you how to set it up for the first time rather than using my little block. So you move, move the tool in so it's touching the wheel. Rotate the work away to move it out a little bit. And I'm looking to remove all of those Sharpie marks. Hopefully you can see there, so it's removed all the sharpie marks across just in that one spot so we know we're good to the right distance we need to be. Rotating round. It's good. This tool's quite blunt because I used it on a load of uh, very seasoned oak. So you can see from using the jig, we're getting a, a really, really long continuous bevel with both that sort of angle continue throughout the entire thing. 
So I'm going to make some more adjustments to this jig over the next few months and when I'm happy with it I'll release a video of how I've made the improved version. So the parting tool is probably the easiest tool out of the lot to sharpen as long as you've got a sharp point there it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, an even as well so I know a lot of my friends will just grind on one side and just have the the point protruded uh, I've got like a, a diamond sort of point on this one so there's lots and lots of different grinds that people tend to do on these parting tools but essentially as long as you've got a long sharp edge across the top that's going to part things off lovely and easily for you. What I tend to do is line up my little V-block. I'll put that down there and that's touching along the entire surface of the flat. So it brings it up to a nice sharp point. Dropping that down then. And if you've got an aluminium oxide wheel, remember it's the sparks that are coming over the top. Twist it round to the other side. getting a nice sharp square point across the entire thing. Now knife parting tools, what I like to do with mine is grind off a slight angle downwards off the top. And I do that just freehand. So to a point and then I like to have a slight curve on mine. As it helps those shavings I think in my opinion just to, to come easily out of the tool. So as the tool steel is really expensive what we want to do is reduce the amount of grinding we have to do. Now in between sharpens you can hone your tools and these little diamond files are really really good for doing that. So you just find the bevel angle, rub across, rub across, same on the other side, rub across and that can really prolong the life of your tool by doing that. A question I often get asked, are those CBN wheels really worth the money? Now I was quite reluctant to buy one. I've been turning seven years and just grinding on aluminium oxide wheels, but finally put the investment in and bought a CBN wheel. And I tell you what, I, I would, wouldn't go back again. In fact, I'm saving up to buy another one for the other side. It's a world difference between sharpening with an aluminium oxide wheel, which is, feels like sharpening with a brick essentially, whereas the CBN wheel will cut smoothly through the work. Now, an advantage of these CBN wheels is you don't have to dress the wheel each time. They pretty much last a, a lifetime as well, but they are a big investment, so they're about £100. But they do reduce the amount of material that's cut away, so your tool steel will last longer and you're less likely to blue your tools, which is a good thing in my opinion. So the short answer is yes, I, I do think they're worth the money and I do think they're worth investing in in the long run. Thank you so much for watching tonight's video. I appreciate it. it's a long one, but I try to cram as many tools in as possible in the shortest period of time. So if you've enjoyed tonight's video or found it useful, please consider supporting me and subscribing to my channel by hitting the link below, as that really helps me out and get more videos like this your way. Now in upcoming videos then, I'm going to be moving on to some project videos next. So showing how I'm using the tools to create some projects. And then in a few months time, we'll come back and have a look at making a bowl sharpening jig. So I hope to see you on the next one. Dalkenvaur, Nostar.